Tom Brokaw. Born in 1940, a multiple award-winning American journalist, New York Times best-selling author of The Greatest Generation, and legendary anchorman of NBC's Nightly News. He rose to national prominence in the 1980s and covered such major events in recent history as the Tiananmen Square Massacre, the Space Shuttle Challenger Disaster, and the fall of the Berlin Wall, where he was live on location as it commenced. He is a man who has made a big impression on the landscape of American broadcast journalism and will surely go down in history as one of the nation's most respected television personalities. But what if I told you Tom Brokaw was also a hardcore gamer? And what if I also told you that he is a devoted fan of Capcom's Resident Evil series? So much so that he's developed somewhat of an obsession with it. And what if I told you he had a creepy old man crush on series heroine Jill Valentine? Wouldn't that be pretty awesome, in a weird way? Well, if you know anything about the news business in America, you know stuff like that never really happens. Like, ever. But in the magical fantasy land of Japan, it's a different story. Shiro Suzuki, born in 1938, is a man that many older Japanese people would immediately recognize as a famous anchor for TBS. That's the Tokyo Broadcasting System, one of the biggest media networks in the world, which among many other programs, produced the worldwide cult hit Takeshi's Castle. He is also a well-known television personality in the island nation, frequently appearing as a guest on a slew of variety shows, and even hosting some of his own, including the once extremely popular Gochouju Hayaushi Quiz. Shiro Suzuki may be as well known for his work in Japan in the area of broadcasting as Tom Brokaw is in the United States. But unlike Mr. Brokaw, Mr. Suzuki is indeed a hardcore gamer, one who has been hooked since at least the days of the Super Famicom, and is a complete fanboy when it comes to Capcom's Biohazard, aka Resident Evil games, which he has a healthy addiction of, and can more than hold his own in, despite his age. And yeah, he most likely has a creepy old man crush on Joe Valentine. But honestly, who can blame him? It's most likely because of his open love of gaming that he was asked to play a role in a little-known video game project in the year 2000. The TBS and Asmic Ace joint produced Oh No! for the Sony PlayStation. Whew, where to start with this one? It's an awesome Japan-only, on-rails 3D running game made by Tycoon, a really obscure Japanese developer that I couldn't find much information about online. I tend to play a lot of strange games, from the homoerotic shooting glory of the Cho Aniki series, the pervy schoolgirl dating sim and shooting hybrid Galgun, to the wacky beat em up hijinks of the absurdly bizarre Puli Rula. While Ono may not be quite as insane as those examples, I can say with ease that it certainly ranks up there. The entirety of the game takes place over one crazy event filled day in the life of Brada protagonist of Ono, and weird little elementary school student who's a part of the Ono family. Ono being a common Japanese surname and obvious play on words in the game's title. To say that the Onos are simply dysfunctional is an understatement. They're downright bizarre and demented. And it's... It's beautiful. Aside from Brada, the other major figures in the game are his younger brother and artist extraordinaire, Junior, as well as their cousin, Sanchan. All three of these boys only wear a pair of white shorts everywhere they go. Well, except for when they take them off, of course. And are identical in appearance to one another. Aside from Sanchan having a mole under one of his eyes, and Junior being a little bit smaller than the other two. The rest of the Ono family is comprised of Brada's stern mother, his foolish and eccentric father, his energetically weird grandfather, and Sanchan's equally stern mother. There are a few other important characters in No-No that serve different roles throughout the game, though none are quite as important as the happy-go-lucky Alessa, who is brought as object of desire, despite her cooties. If you're wondering what Shiro Suzuki's involvement is in all of this, he's the story's narrator, and plays the role completely straight, which is an intriguing contrast to all of the unusual and wacky shenanigans being described. Take a listen to his delivery of the plot here. <laughs> anyway, the main game mode of Ono oh is. Well, Ono oh no mode, which is made up of three separate campaigns, with only Brada's being available to play initially, named Ono oh mode, because of his last name. 
confused yet? There are 10 stages in Brado's campaign, and the goal of each one is to reach the end of a set, linear path. The game's levels consist of a variety of interesting and memorable locales with some fun set pieces. To only mention a few, you'll traverse town streets, run through elementary schools, get chased down a highway by a fiery tanker truck, take a stroll on the beach to perv out to bikini-clad babes, enjoy some rides at a carnival, and spy on young lovers reaching third base in a moonlit park. How romantic. But just because there are parks in Ono, that doesn't mean that completing it will be a walk in the park. See? I could do my own bad puns too. Oh no! In every level, you must always control a group of characters simultaneously, and things begin simply enough, as there are only two to deal with at first, Brada and Sanchan. But as the game progresses, more characters will enter and leave the party here and there with the maximum number of members set at 4. Since this is a running game, stages scroll at a constant pace, and you'll have to wade through numerous hazards and pitfalls before arriving at your destination. Using the default control setup, the D-pad moves the party left and right, the X or circle button makes everyone jump, and triangle cycles between two different formations, wide and narrow, that's all. If any single member of your group is left behind somewhere off screen, it's game over. This includes falling into holes and being knocked away by a large object, like a car. In most cases, you can get anyone who's trailing behind to catch up to the group safely with some smooth maneuvering. But even so, you must be careful not to bump into too many people or roadblocks, as doing so will also reduce the party's HP, represented by a meter at the top left corner. Hamburgers are scattered all over each area that recover health, plus 1 HP for a normal burger, plus 2 for a deluxe. But there are also raw fish sandwiches everywhere that are apparently even grosser than they sound, since they'll reduce HP by 2 if picked up. Even if you manage to dodge all of the dangers along the path perfectly and never take a single hit, picking up burger items is necessary, as the HP meter is continually draining, and you know what happens when it hits zero. As you can see, while Ono has a simple control scheme and setup, there are a lot of things to juggle with in order to succeed, and mastering jumping and formation shifting, as well as memorizing stage layouts, are an absolute must. Things can get difficult, and you'll probably be screaming oh no quite a bit on your first playthrough, but thankfully there are a few checkpoints you can activate in every stage to take away some of the frustration. The only penalties you receive when starting from a checkpoint are that HP starts at half and score is reset to zero. So with enough endurance, you'll be able to beat a stage even if your skills are a bit lacking. After nearly every running section, the gameplay changes up. Not to a boss fight or anything, but... There's a dance-off, usually to a remixed version of that particular stage's BGM and superimposed over some trippy LSD-induced scenery in the background. You'll need to play either one of two types, Denda de Dance and Hansha de Amole, both of which involve using the face buttons and D-pad as if it was a standard rhythm game. The first requires you to press buttons in a particular order rapidly over three 10-second rounds, and the other has you inputting a command as fast as you can when it appears on screen for a set amount of time. At the end of the dance-off, you're ranked, with Funky given to those who are the best around, and Danger reserved for those with slow and chubby sausage fingers. It seems that these rounds are only for fun in setting high scores, and progression to the next stage is rewarded no matter how fabulous or piss-poor the performance. Without skipping any cutscenes and playing moderately well, 
Brutus' campaign can be completed in under 2 hours, and unlocks Alessa's campaign, called... You can probably already guess it. Ono Mode. This time named so because of her last name, which is similar to Brutta's, but uses different characters and has a slightly different pronunciation. While her campaign is shorter than the main one, it's quite a bit more difficult, as all checkpoints in the entire game have been removed. Screw up majorly once, even at the very end of a stage, and it's back to the very beginning. By this point, you should be familiar enough with the controls and game system that this won't happen often, but you'll most definitely be screaming out more explicit words than oh or no when it does. Tackling Alessa's story will unlock the final extra modes in Oh No, Crazy Mode, and Omake Mode. The former is Brutta's full campaign, but with a couple of changes that alter the experience quite a bit from the previous playthrough. First off, the HP bar is gone, as well as any food items so you never have to worry about dying for lack of HP, and can relax a bit when playing any stage. And second, a somersault attack can now be executed that will send any person or small sized object flying off screen, and creating combos racks up points for a higher score. There are only a couple of variations to the levels themselves, mainly that some areas require the somersault attack to break through walls or other objects to progress. Crazy mode is pretty fun, and a much easier romp than the other two campaigns. Omake mode lets you play any of the dance-off sections in the game, and allows you to select from a few characters aside from the protagonists. You can check any of the scores from each game mode in the menu, as well as replay any level you've completed via a stage select option. Finally, there is a multiplayer component to Oh No that's not quite as fleshed out as it could be, but is a nice bonus nonetheless. First off is Love Love Mode, a cooperative game where two players' chemistry and compatibility is tested. You must proceed through a level as normal, avoiding all of the dangers scattered along the way, but at the same time pressing R1 or L1 to hold hands with your partner. It can be pretty chaotic at times, and provides a nice challenge and plenty of laughs. The other multiplayer mode is Funky Battle Mode, which pits you against a friend to see who can drain the other's hit points first while running through a stage. The somersault attack is available to use here, as well as a punch and kick using the shoulder buttons. Both of these multiplayer modes have two selectable stages, and an interesting gameplay variation from single player is more freedom in movement, because you can run forward and backward in addition to left and right. If you're a friendless loser, which you know you are, and don't have anyone to play these game modes with, the Ono oh game devs have your back, as you can play either with a CPU controlled partner or rival. Another major thing I want to bring up about Ono oh no is its awesome soundtrack, which you've surely already picked up on since you've been listening to it for most of this video. It's a good mix of musical genres like rock, reggae, punk, hip hop, and hell, even samba. I listen to a lot of video game music, so I totally mean it when I say that Ono oh has some of the catchiest and most memorable music I've heard in a game, and even beyond. The game's graphics and art design are also fantastic, and as you may have noticed already, the flat 2D characters mixed with 3D backgrounds are quite similar to another PS1 title, Parappa the Rapper. The world and characters of Ono oh no could have been a perfect fit for an animated television short on TBS, but unfortunately that never happened. The box art and instruction manual design are really well done and interesting too, and a special poster featuring hundreds of goofy faced bradas is included as a bonus. On the reverse side of the track names and lyrics to each of the songs in the game, all in their English glory. Despite its creativity, solid gameplay, and weird charm, Oh No has pretty much been forgotten by the gaming community, as there's barely any information or talk about it online, even when searching in Japanese. Who knows if it was really even noticed by much of anyone in the first place. But either way, the lack of love given to this title is a damn shame. It can be pretty hard to find, but probably due to its obscurity, it's cheap. Really cheap. Much unlike another Japan-only PlayStation 1 running game that has shot up in price over the years and attained cult status, Pepsi Man. In my opinion, between the two, Ono oh is definitely the better game. And if you're a fan of the PS1, imports, or just like to collect weird games, you need to pick this one up. 
This is a redo of episode 18 of Import Gaming for the Win that I uploaded all the way back in 2014. I was asked by Daniel, aka DJ Slope of Slope's Game Room, if I would contribute a video to his channel in an attempt on his part for me to get more viewers. And since that episode was the first video he saw of mine, and I wasn't completely satisfied with it in the first place, I figured remaking the Ono oh episode made the most sense. Thanks very much to Daniel for always trying to get me more exposure with his shoutouts and support over the years. I really do appreciate that so much. And thank you, the viewer, as well, for watching this quote-unquote remastered episode of Import Gaming for the Win. This is Jimmy Hoppe. Take care.